Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the 2017 World War K Wu Greater China Business Conference, titled A New Chapter for U.S.-China Relations, Investment, Growth Strategies, and Collaboration Opportunities. My name is Jeff Jia, and I'm a second-year full-time MBA student at the UCLA Anderson School of Management and Vice President of the Greater China Business Association. I am also the student co-director of today's conference, together here with my classmate Max Xiao. It is a great pleasure and honor for me to open the 11th Wilbur K. Wu Greater China Business Conference this afternoon. We are delighted to have everyone join us here today. I hope that you will enjoy the conference and take time to learn and interact from the business leaders from various sectors and disciplines that we have brought here today together to share thoughts, insights on the changing dynamics, implication, and future of the US-China relationship. I would also like to extend a special thank you to all of our guest speakers and moderators and acknowledge some of the past student conference directors who have joined us here for today's event. I encourage you to also download the Wu Conference app where you can quickly and easily find more details on today's conference schedule and speakers. I would like to thank and recognize our platinum sponsors, PwC and Cafe Bank, for their continued support and commitment to the conference, and our bronze sponsors, Cost, Castle, and Nicholson, and Lancy. And also acknowledge the conference organizers, the UCLA Anderson's Center for Global Management, UCLA Anderson's Greater China Business Association, and the UCLA Chinese Student and Scholars Association, who have all worked hard to bring this conference to you. We are also grateful for the support of the China Enterprise Council, the UCLA Asia Pacific Center, and the Center for Chinese Studies. And of course, I would like to express our gratitude to the Wu family, whose generosity enables us to bring this conference each year. Represented here today by Michael Wu, son of Robert K. Wu, who sadly passed away in November 2012, and Beth Wu, who sadly passed away on March 2nd of this year. Wilbur and Beth endowed the Wilbur K. Wu Greater China Business Conference at the UCR Anderson to show their gratitude for the training that Wilbur received here at his alma mater many years ago. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Max Xiao, and uh, as Jeff mentioned, I'm also a second year full-time MBA student at UCL Anderson, the vice president of the Greater China Business Association, and. Uh, the co-student director of today's conference. I would like to take this opportunity to thank and welcome Judy Olin, Dean and John E. Anderson Chair in Management of at UCL Anderson. Since her appointment in 2006, Dean Olin has strengthened UCL Anderson's focus on international business and global management, developed targeted partnerships with an emphasis on Asia, especially the greater China region, and advanced UCO Anderson into one of the leading school of management in the world. Under Dean Olian's leadership, the Center for Global Management was established here at UCO Anderson. So now please join me thanking and welcoming the Dean of UCO Anderson, Dean Judy Olian. Thank you so much, Jeff and Max, and um, we're very proud of our students who are essential uh, to this conference and to many more. And welcome to the 11th annual Wilbur Wu Greater China Conference. I certainly myself learn a lot. Um, I'll be heading back to Taiwan and China in a few weeks. Um, I try and visit there at least once a year. And what I learn at these conferences prepares me for what is change that is happening at record speed every time I visit. It's almost a new country um, or um, some major changes. Um, I think it's extremely important for us to be talking about US uh, Sino relationships because of the prominence of both countries, both the economic superpowers of the beginning of the 21st century. But 
how we talk and what we focus on in these conferences has changed over the last 11 years. I think 11 years ago, we were probably mostly focused on US investments in China. Somewhere in between, we talked about cross-border issues. And today, we're increasingly talking about Chinese investments in the US. And Chinese, China is now uh, the US's largest trade partner, uh, superseding Canada, which until recently was the largest trade um, partner of the US. And, and when we talk about US-Sino relationships, of course, we have to talk about what may be a changing uh, circumstantial environment, a changing policy with the new US administration and with new geopolitical issues occurring. First of all, what's China's growing leadership role with the withdrawal of the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP? And is China really going to step into that void? Um, I don't know if you detect an Australian accent, but I'm originally from Australia. And I can tell you that um, now with the TPP withdrawal, there's a big vacuuming sound in, in that region of the world directing towards um, China. So how is the puzzle going to fit now that this overarching structure, which was going to be the TPP, is, um, I don't want to say null and void, but is certainly going to be different. Um, we hear our president talking about the value of a strong dollar or not so strong dollar. How does that play in US-Sino relationships and in the growing trade relationships that we have? And of course, different people have different perspectives on that. And I know William will be talking about currency, William Wu um, will be talking about currency issues from the China perspective. Another issue that I think will have a huge hangover effect on the region is the question around what China's role is in managing the threat of North Korea. And uh, I can see that question and that role affecting not just geopolitics, but economic issues in the region. And lastly, how do these um, external forces and factors and China's um, important internal issues in terms of its economy and social change, how does that ultimately affect China's growth? And China's growth, um, when China sneezes, the rest of the world gets pneumonia. So these internal factors cannot be seen as strictly internal. They are very important uh, determining factors in terms of the global uh, health of the global economy. Each time we get together for the Wu conference, we focus on a slightly different set of issues because the issues of the day do change and China's um, economic and social uh, policy um, undergo continuous change. We bring together, thanks to you, a variety of perspectives of experts from our community, from our alumni, from our faculty, and um, really talk about what you see in this evolving superpower relationship. I want to thank our student organizers, um, the uh, Greater China Association, our students from UCLA, obviously the Center for Global Management and Lucy Allard, the executive director, our faculty who are um, panelists, and to every one of you who has been um, a contributor uh, to the program. Let me just tell you briefly about our namesake, Wilbur Wu, who had a very prescient vision uh, more than 11 years ago, um, probably 13 years ago, 12 years ago when we start, started talking about this, where he foresaw with his wife Beth the importance of an event to promote economic ties between uh, Greater China and the US. Um, sadly, both Wilbur and Beth have passed, but certainly their vision lives on and we honor them both. 
Wilbur was the executive vice president of Cathay Bank, which was the first Chino-American owned bank um, and still extremely prominent in uh, that community. He was chairman of the Chinese Times, which is the first Chinese language newspaper in the US. He was chairman of a variety, quite a number of Asia-focused business trade groups. And he was grand president of the Chinese American Citizens Alliance, which was a key lobbying group for the immigration reform bill of the mid 60s, which truly opened the doors to many immigrants coming in the 60s, 70s, and thereafter uh, into the US. And, and Wilbur was absolutely key and saw the promise in um, that immigration bill. Uh, Jeff thanked our sponsors, PwC and Cathay Bank, our platinum sponsors and our bronze sponsors, Lancy and Cox, Cattle and Nicholson. But I do want to at least acknowledge uh, Mr. Pin Tai, who's the CEO and president of Cathay Bank Corps, if you'll just wave. And thank you for your support and, and for being here. Thank you. And of course, Michael Wu, the son of Wilbur and Beth, who uh, carries on the legacy. Michael is very comfortable in these kinds of crowds because he's a fellow dean. He's the dean of the College of Environmental Design at Cal Poly Pomona. He's an urban planner himself, and he's the first Asian American elected to the LA City Council. And those of you who live around here know what a powerful position and influential impact the LA Council, City Council has, and he served on that council for eight years. He chairs the board of directors of Sustainable Economic Enterprises of LA. Um, he is a UC product, uh, first with a BA in politics and urban studies from Santa Cruz, UC Santa Cruz, and then a master's of city planning from Berkeley, our sister institution. And, and here at Anderson, we're just so grateful to Michael for how he has remained continuously engaged um, in the Wilbur Wu Greater China Conference and has been a champion of um, what we focus on and has really helped us shape the agenda every year of what should be the discussion topics for this US-China dialogue. So I hope that we can count on many more years of collaboration, Michael, and please let me welcome you uh, to the stage here. Thank you, Dean Olean. It is a great honor to be introduced by another dean. And when she introduces me as being a University of California product, it reminds me that I'm very sad that when I was in my late teens and early 20s, I didn't have the foresight to go to UCLA. Uh, if only, my I'm sure my career and my life would have been completely different if I'd had the wisdom to come to UCLA. But uh, I'm very glad to have this opportunity today to represent our family here. Uh, we are extremely pleased by the success of this endeavor going back over 11 years. Uh, the, the original idea um, that, that I think originally came from Al Osborne, the senior associate dean, was that the students should play the lead role organizing this conference. Uh, that was an idea which initially made my father a little bit nervous, but the students really delivered for the last 11 years and have demonstrated what students can do in terms of putting on a completely professional first class production. So we're very happy to have the students do such, such outstanding work. Also, we're very proud of the involvement of the faculty and staff, especially the Center for Global Management. And Lucy Allard, thank you for being so steadfast in keeping the going. Um, uh, I wanted to say that uh, usually when I give these introductory remarks at this conference, I talk about my father because he was much more the public figure. As you heard from Dean Olean's introduction, he was the one who used to head organizations. He was the one who got his name into Chinese newspapers, occasionally into the LA Times. My mother did not get as much of the attention, but I thought that today I would spend a few minutes and tell you a little bit about her story, because actually that is another version of the original inspiration for this conference, which was to try to find a way to build closer ties between China and the United States. 
United States. I thought I would say a few words about my mother who tended to not get as much attention as my dad did, and yet she, I think, played an equally large role in helping to shape the perceptions of her children and, and many others about the relationship between China and the United States. Beth Wu was born in Stockton, California. Um, this is a picture of her with her mother and father uh, at a very early age. Um, Stockton, some of you, have any of you ever been to Stockton? Some, okay, good. Uh, some of you may know that uh, 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 Stockton was one of the major destinations that grew in California after the gold rush, when many Chinese came over here uh, seeking gold or at least trying to get a job working for a railroad. Stockton was one of three towns that became very prominent. Uh, and so in Cantonese, Stockton was frequently called Sam Fao, which means th number three town. Uh, number one town being uh, Dai Fao, big town, San Francisco. Uh, Yi Fao, uh, number two town, Sacramento, and Stockton was considered number three town. Uh, I couldn't find a photograph of, uh, of uh, my grandparents' house, but I did find a photograph of a house on Sutter Street in Stockton that looks an awful lot like what I remember going to visit when I was a little kid. Uh, so she grew up in a house like that. That's a photo of our Uncle Ernest's restaurant. There, were, there was a thriving Chinatown until, like many other Chinatowns, it was torn apart by a combination of freeway construction and redevelopment. Uh, and uh, the Confucius Church is a place that she used to hang out as a social gathering place for Chinese American teenagers in Stockton. Um, this is a picture of mom. She was a, she, uh, that's, that's her up in the upper left. Uh, she was an only daughter in a family with, as you can see, one, two, three, four brothers. Um, uh, she grew up in Stockton, graduated from high school, it happened to be after the Depression started. And so, like some other Chinese families, as a way of saving money and also to encourage the younger generation to find out what the real world was like, uh, her parents sent Beth to China. Um, uh, to go to school, even though she had graduated from high school, they were sending her to a middle school, or, or a yeah, middle school in, in Guangzhou, uh, where she happened to meet a handsome young man who turned out to be my father. Uh, and, uh, but, but in one of her writings about her upbringing, she, she said when her parents talked to her about the idea of going to China, she viewed it as an adventure and she wrote, I was raring to go. Uh, Mom and dad got married in Hong Kong. This is their, uh, one of their uh, <coughs> wedding pictures uh, from the Hong Kong Hotel. Um, this is a picture with my two younger sisters, my two older sisters, Pat and Janice. I thought I picked the right picture, but my younger sister Elaine told me I picked the wrong one. They were already in, by, in Los Angeles by this time. But uh, anyway, my older, my older two sisters were born in China. Um, then the war happened. Um, uh, it's sort of hard to imagine what it was like, but... Um, what, what our family decided was that the women and children would stay in China. The men, meaning uh, the, the grandfathers and the grandmother, uh, the, the grandfathers and my dad, came back to Los Angeles. Um, nobody knew how long the war was going to go on. It turned out that uh, five years passed with no ability to communicate between my mother, who was taking care of uh, the two sisters and the men in the family who were here in the United States. Um, when, when the Japanese army invaded uh, uh, Guangzhou, uh, my mother and my two sisters and my two grandmothers fled to Hong Kong. Then when, um, when the Japanese army invaded Hong Kong, they fled to a village in um, uh, Kaiping uh, called Ngao Ma Leng, or Cow's Hair Hill. Now, think about this. Mom grew up in a Chinese-American family, but it was in Stockton, you know, so she was used to running water. She was used to electricity. Uh, and so here she was actually living in the village where my dad was born, but which he hadn't lived in since he was a little boy. And now here's my, my mother, uh, used to the American way of life, running water, electricity, suddenly having to live in the village. She used to tell stories about uh, fleeing from soldiers coming into the countryside, carrying uh, my sister Janice, who had polio, and uh, 
uh, a pig on the other shoulder, like running into the woods. Uh, so that went on for about four years. Uh, and actually, as I said, my dad is actually better known than my mom is, but, but if there are, are any aspiring screenwriters in the audience, my mom's life probably has much better material for a screenplay. So after the war was over, the family fi finally uh, reunited in Los Angeles. Um, uh, my sister Elaine, my sister Pam, and I were the next three kids. We were all lucky enough to be born here in Los Angeles. Uh, the f people associate dad with Cathay Bank, which he was very proud of, but actually our family business was Chungking Produce Company, a very successful produce company that, that taught me at a very early age that I didn't think I wanted to lead the kind of hours, the business life my dad had, who used to show up at the produce market at midnight, work there till eight or nine in the morning when they closed, and then went over to Cathay Bank. I didn't want to live that way, so Dean Olean, that's why I'm a dean. These days. Anyway, the family business was very successful and, and built up a network buying produce from uh, mostly Chinese American owned farms and then built up a national clientele selling things like bok choy to Chinese restaurants in Boston or New York because back in those days it was harder for them to get bok choy or other Chinese vegetables grown locally. So Cathay Bank did a lot of business with United Airlines and, and created this national clientele. And that's my mom. She was the bookkeeper, but she really helped run the business for about 40 years. Um, in 1962, our family moved to what is known as the first suburban Chinatown, Monterey Park. Although when we moved there, there weren't as many Chinese as there were in the 1970s and, and 80s. But it was also an experience moving from L.A. to Monterey Park and dealing with both the positive side and racial tensions which developed in response to immigration uh, coming into Monterey Park. Um, also, the family did a lot to encourage a sense of public public service. Uh, this is a photo, that's my mom there on the left. Uh, that's a photo of me on July 1st, 1985, being sworn in as a member of the city council. But mom on her own did an awful lot. You know, when she, after she graduated from high school in Stockton, it was not very common for women to go to college. Mom never went to college, but she had a very successful life and, and career on her own, very active in community organizations. On the left, here she is uh, being honored at a dinner for Asian Pacific Family Center. Uh, that came out of getting a phone call from a stranger she didn't know who said that there is a growing problem in the Chinese American community of mental illness and there aren't the resources to deal with it. Uh, the person who called, Gladys Lee, the executive director, thought there'd be, there'd be hesitation because there was no history on the part of the Wu family supporting mental health. Uh, and also was aware of the stigma attached to mental illness. And Gladys told me years later that mom actually responded immediately and said that she thought we ought to do this because she had friends who told her about problems of mem members of their families. So she ended up being one of the early board members for the Asian Pacific Family Center. And in her later years, after she retired from Cathay Bank, mom still wanted to serve. So uh, she spent a lot of her time at both the Chinatown branch of the LA Public Library in Chinatown and at the Monterey Park Library, the Brugemeyer Library, tutoring Chinese immigrants, teaching them English. Uh, they also, mom and dad also endowed a community room at the Chinatown branch. So, uh, as you heard, mom passed away on uh, March 2nd, uh, but she led a very full life, uh, 101 years. We are very proud that she enabled our family to continue this tradition. So, um, that's, that's what I wanted to say about mom. My, my next job is to introduce the next speaker, Mr. Pin Tai, representing Cathay Bank. Uh, back in 1962, when Cathay Bank started, my dad was part of the first generation of leaders of Cathay Bank. At that time, they operated in a small storefront on North Broadway in, <coughs> in Chinatown. So I'm sure dad would have been amazed. Well, he, he was amazed, but uh, uh, also very proud of the success that Cathay Bank 
has demonstrated over the years becoming a multinational institution. Mr. Pintai represents the, is it second or third generation of leadership of Cathay Bank. He, uh, like, like his predecessor, the chairman and, and President Dunsin Cheng, he continues to reflect the, the respect of the bank for science. Uh, his predecessor, Dunsin Cheng, was a physicist, I believe, and, uh, and Mr. Pin Tai uh, is, a, is a chemical engineer, uh, uh, but, but pr appropriately trained to lead a major institution like Cathay Bank. His career was in Bank of China earlier, then he came to Cathay Bank, headed the operations on the East Coast and in New York, and then last year uh, became the uh, president and CEO of Cathay Bank. Mr. Tai, yesterday I was in the branch in El Monte depositing a check and uh, Wilson Tang came up to me and informed me last week was the 55th anniversary of Cathay Bank. So it's quite an accomplishment and we're lucky to have with us, we're lucky to have the support of the bank for this conference, but also we're lucky to have Mr. Tai here representing the bank and helping us again to cement those relationships between China and the United States. Please join with me in welcoming Mr. Pian Tai. Thank you, Michael, for the nice introduction. It is really my great pleasure to be here today. Uh, Cathay Bank is proud to sponsor the Wu Great China Business Conference and commend the great work the conference has achieved since 2007. And thank you, Dean Olian, uh, Michael, and the UCLA students, and also I have a lot of colleagues here uh, from Cathay Bank and other sponsors, especially PwC, Lancy, and Cost Castle Nicholson, who have put in a lot of time and effort to organize this conference. I had the privilege of getting to know Mr. Wu when I joined Cathay Bank in 1999. At that time, he was our director and he later became our vice chairman. He was always so friendly and kind and I still remember that he insisted I took a ride with him, even though given the title and the age difference, I should be driving him around. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Wu is very near and dear to our hearts at KT Bank. We go back a long way. And as Michael just mentioned, we just celebrated our 55th anniversary two days ago. And uh, Wilbert was one of the original members of our executive management team. He joined Cathay Bank one year after our opening, and he helped lay down the groundwork for what Cathay has become today. Back in 1962, the banking landscape was very different. There were only very few Chinese American residents and businesses, and with no prior understanding of the American marketplace. It was difficult for Chinese American to obtain credit. And Mr. Wu immigrated from Guangzhou, uh, China to Los Angeles when he was five years old, starting with his admiration for the two countries. He had a vision to bring the two vastly different cultures together through the promotion of trade between the two countries. His passion to advocate for closer tie between Greater China and US is seen here to date. Cadet Bank's uh, founding mission is to serve the growing banking needs of the Chinese American community. And so naturally, Mr. Wu and Cadet was a perfect fit. Stronger bond and relationship between the US and China, and later waves of immigration in the 1980s first from Taiwan, Hong Kong, and in the last 20 years, mostly from China. And the opening of trade between US and Greater China had fueled much of the growth and success of Cathay Bank. Today, Cathay Bank, through the bank holding company, Cathay General Bangkok, is a publicly traded company on NASDAQ with a market cap of $3.1 billion and total asset size of over $14 billion, with branches in nine states from West Coast extended to Midwest and to Eastern Seaboard. 
and located in 10 of the top 12 cities with the largest Asian American populations, and lo also locations in Greater China. I, I applaud the Wu family for their commitment and dedication in continuing the legacy of Mr. Wu. And on a separate note, my sincere condolences to the Wu family for the recent passing of Beth, who was in Chinese tradition, we call it 102 years old. Uh, the purpose of this conference is to bring together people to share experience about the relationships between the US and Greater China and create meaningful networking opportunities and to inspire our leaders of the future. Mr. Wu would be so proud of how much progress we have made. Today, China is one of the top US trading partners and undoubtedly plays an important role in the US economy. Since a meeting between President Xi Jinping and President Trump a few weeks ago, we see glimpses that their negotiations and discussion may actually bear fruit. Taking cue from this, I'm looking forward to the discussion today from various subject matter experts and professionals about how the US-China relationship will evolve for greater growth. Let me share with you a few recent developments between China and US. The United States became the largest recipient of booming Chinese outbound foreign direct investment in 2016, with $45.6 billion worth of complete acquisition and greenfield investment. Cumulative Chinese direct investment in the US economy since 2000 now exceed 100 billion. China has become the largest trade partner of US since 2015. A total, the total trade volume of 2016 was $578.6 billion. And the international students from China coming to US uh, at, is at historical height, total 328,000 in 2016. Between 2010 and 2015, Chinese investors spent at least $93 billion on residential properties and $17.1 billion on commercial property. By the end of 2015, Chinese funded projects under construction or printed total at least $15 billion. And one, there's one, billion, uh, one million Chinese tourists visiting LA alone last year, the first for all the US cities. So LA is the, that's, uh, the destination of uh, choice uh, for the Chinese visitors. On that note, on behalf of Cathay Bank, we are pleased that you are here today, and we hope that this annual event is a platform to greater insight, and more importantly, an opportunity for you to network and form relationships they will last a lot lifetime. And thank you again. Thank you.